The team behind Fluent Forms and the other Fluent products brings us something that I'm pretty excited about personally, which is a product called Fluent Booking. Now, this is going to be similar to Calendly and some of the other SaaS booking plugins out there, but there's many cases where we wanna build a website for a client that has some kind of booking functionality, needs to be basic, and you probably want to avoid a monthly fee. So what I'm going to be doing in this video is looking at Fluent Booking for the very first time, going through it, and hopefully using this on one of my upcoming client websites, which is for a massage studio. So let's go ahead and switch over to WordPress and we'll take a look. Okay, so I have the plugin installed. I've not done anything with it except activate my license because that's the first thing that it wants you to do. So let's go ahead and just start off in the dashboard area. So looks like there is a nice little getting started onboarding thing here. So let's go with the event type of one-to-one. -one. Like I said, we're gonna be using this example um, as though it's for a massage studio, so you can book one of the providers and schedule a massage on the website. That's what we're hoping to achieve here. So event color, I will, hopefully we can get some brand colors or hex values or RGBA in there or something, but let's just say event name, one hour Swedish massage and then 60 minutes, perfect. Uh, we'll just put a sample description in here. The location uh, will definitely be in-person uh, organizer address, location description, our office. Oh, actually this particular one offers both. Interesting, so I wonder if we're gonna need two different event types for this. Uh, we'll just go with our office for now. That's probably gonna be a fairly typical setup for massage. Select your time zone, America, Chicago. I think it detected that because my WordPress setting is still UTC plus zero as the default. So that's kind of cool. It went ahead and just detected my actual time zone. So that's nice. We will continue here and then we can set our availability. So it looks like nine to five, Monday through Friday. That's perfect. We'll just leave that as the default. Um, I don't know if we need to save. This feels really familiar to some of the other Fluent products out there. We already set, oh, availability is a little bit different. Okay. You can schedule up to 60 days in the future use existing schedule, we already did that. And then, oh, there's date overrides. How do I add date overrides? It's like for things like, you know, Christmas and other holidays, or maybe if you're out of town, you want to change those. So buffer time, this is just like Calendly where you can set a uh, buffer time before and after. So if you want, you know, like 15 minutes after the event to switch over and get ready, you know, maybe something like 15 minutes or 30 minutes, whatever you need. Minimum notice is four hours booking. Me, if it was me doing this, I would want like a full day notice. I don't want somebody booking same day. Time slot interval is use event length. Uh, I guess we'll have to play with that. Maybe that's maybe that's like what you can book. You know, maybe it's 3 p.m. versus 3.15 as availability. Limit how many times this event can be booked. Okay. One per day. That's nice. So if you knew you could only handle like three clients a day, maybe your hands get tired or something like that. And then limit total booking duration. What's the difference there? Limit total amount of time this event can be booked. I'm not sure I understand that, but that's okay. Cool, so let's say three bookings per day. Attendee permissions can cancel and can reschedule. So interestingly, in this particular case for my client, they um, they will allow it, but with certain conditions. So if it's within 24 hours, there's like a, a deposit, like a 50% deposit that is lost. Um, so I wonder if we can incorporate that. So we'll leave those enabled for now. Question settings. So your name, email, what is this meeting about? We would change this. Um, do you have any you know, I don't know, something like issues we need to be aware of. We'll just go ahead and save that as an example. And it looks like you can add a pretty flexible set of options here. So that's great. We will go ahead and leave this um, as is for now. Then our email notifications. So we have booking confirmations to the attendee and to you. Meeting reminders, booking canceled notifications. All these are good. What do these look like? Great, okay. Looks pretty comprehensive right out of the box. That's great. SMS notifications. Okay, so if you configure Twilio, you can get them to be texted. That's great. Payment settings, here we go. This is what we wanted. I hope we can do a Stripe test situation to see if we can do kind of like the canceled appointment situation. I guess I'll go ahead and connect this to my Stripe account so we can test. Okay, so I got Stripe connected, which is perfect. So let's go back to, I guess it was on our calendars. What's the difference? Oh, bookings is when somebody actually completes the booking. Okay, so our calendar here, we'll go back to our payment settings. 
Enable this event as paid and collect payment. Okay, use native booking form. So the booking fee, uh, I don't know what it will be. $100 looks like it's the default, so that's fine. But what is this? I wonder what the difference is. Let's just say deposit is $50. So we'll update this. And then webhooks and integrations. I'm sure there's all kinds of cool stuff you can do with those. So I wonder if we have any more options in our Stripe settings here. It doesn't look like we do. Okay. At this point, I want to actually get this on my website and take a look at it. So if I go ahead and click this share button, we have a short code. We have the ability to create a landing page. That's pretty cool. And then we also have just a Gutenberg block. So let's go to our homepage here. And we're just going to drop this in with the fluent booking option here. And then let's take a look on the front end. Oh, okay, I guess you have to do some more configuration here. So you have to say, here's my service. So we have to go through these settings here and these are just kind of your personal preference. No real special settings. So if we go ahead and look at this, looks like my system is in dark mode. So the calendar switched, which is pretty cool even though my website doesn't switch. So if we were to click this, looks like we can book a slot every hour, which is perfect, nine to five, exactly as it is supposed to do. So if we say 11 a.m., then there is my stuff here. So it looks like it's gonna to want to charge me $150. So of course I'm in Stripe test mode, so I just went ahead and entered a sample card in here and we can go ahead and click on pay. And it's thinking about it. Cool, so it brings me to a, a booking confirmation page. Looks like this is all kind of dynamically generated on the fly, which is great. So I can add this to my calendar. Let's just pop into my Google calendar here. Perfect. So it even adds this link. That's interesting. Is this my, that same page? Cool. That's pretty awesome. So if we want to reschedule, what does that look like? Brings us to this unique page, which is perfect. I didn't have to configure any of this. Really awesome. So we can reschedule just as we would expect. Are those links here inside of the calendar invite? It doesn't look like it. I guess you'd have to go to this page specifically. And then if I wanted to cancel, the meeting has been scheduled. Do I have to click it again? Oh, okay. That's a little confusing. I, I'm, it shot me back up to the top instead. Please provide cancellation reason. We'll, we'll just leave that alone for now. Okay. So that's pretty awesome. Um, it seems like I've looked at <laughs> almost all there is to look at really in just about 10 minutes time here. I hope that this plugin continues to develop and add more options here because this is really capable and it seems really great, but it doesn't look like I have the ability to do what I want to do in terms of preventing cancellations. And um, I mean, we can obviously charge a deposit, but I wonder actually, is it gonna give me indi any indication here about canceling if I say, I'll just put nothing in there. So cancel booking, meeting has been canceled. I wonder what the behavior is then by default because we collected a payment in this case, but what about the refund? So if we go to bookings, there's me canceled. Then what's it, what's it gonna do? Yeah, I guess since it's in uh, Stripe, you'd have to go refund it somehow, right? I guess you'd have to go into Stripe and, and refund it. That's not the worst thing in the world. It's just a little clunky. I wonder if I hadn't canceled it. I'm gonna make another appointment real quick. And we're gonna go just any other time. I'm gonna continue to payment. Okay, so I have this event. We'll go ahead and book this. And then now let's go back into our bookings. So here's the one that I just booked. And what options do I have here? Just looks like it's going to force me to go into Stripe to do anything with it. So that's kind of interesting. We can reschedule, okay, cool. This is kind of nice actually. So we can reschedule this here on our end. We can cancel it or delete it. What happens if we cancel? Reason for cancellation, not interested in massaging myself. Yes, cancel. Booking has been canceled. Okay, let me check my email on the other screen real quick. So it looks like in my settings, I didn't actually set up any of the email settings here. So like my from name and from email and stuff like that. So I didn't actually get any emails to my inbox. I was just curious what it looks like from the uh, customer side and from the vendor side, just what those emails look like. So I'll go ahead and add these in so that we can see them. I wanna take a look at what the emails are like. So it's gonna be no reply at Apex staging. 
We'll just go ahead and save those and hopefully next time it will send us something. Now what I wanna do is go take a look at the other event type. So we have a group, which is like one to many. So it said for webinars and that kind of thing, we'll say, um, you know, massage 101 webinar, 30 minutes. The location will be, uh, looks like we could do an online, if we connected our Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, online meeting or custom. Let's do online. We're just going to put in Google link. Cool that you can display it on the booking page. We probably wouldn't want to do that. We'll update this. Max invitees in a spot. We'll say five. I don't know what that means exactly. Display remaining spots on the booking page. Yep. Make sure people understand that it's a limited space situation here. And then it looks like we have a lot of the same options we've already looked at. I just wanted to see how this might differ. Pretty much all the same here. Same questions, emails, SMS, all that same kind of thing. We're not gonna set up payment for this one. But now I wanna go look at that on the homepage here. So let's change this to our Massage 101 webinar, update, and then just see how the flow differs. Okay, so you have a, a slot system for every available thing. That's kind of cool. So this would be great for things like tours and that kind of thing where you do offer regular tours and there's a number of spots left. So that's super awesome. Nice and easy. And then online meeting, join online meeting right here takes us to Google, just like we said. Sweet. Well, I mean, I feel like we've taken a look in a matter of you know less than 20 minutes at all Fluent Booking has to offer. Realistically, at this point, this software feels really good and like it has serious potential. It's very new at this point. I think it's only been out like a month or two at the time of me recording this video. So there's probably still a lot of features that they would want to add. I think for me, for this to be viable for this particular client, there would need to be the ability to control, like I said, the cancellation policies and what happens around those sorts of things. Right now, it's either the customer can cancel or they cannot. And I think we're gonna need some middle ground for something like that. But overall, this feels pretty much exactly like Calendly, but inside of Word. WordPress. So this is going to be my preferred booking plugin, especially if it starts to add some new features moving forward. So hopefully this first look at Fluent Booking is helpful. I'm pretty stoked on this particular product and think it has some serious legs. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.